And with that, Maya, I think we can dive into the next talk, which is John Ullmann. I need to switch slides here. <laughs> there we <Sneaky>. go. <clears throat> John is originally from Switzerland. You've maybe seen him speak at NEOS conference uh, last year, or you've seen him at one of the NEOS meetups. Um, he's uh, originally from Switzerland, now living in beautiful Austria with his wife and daughter. Uh, and John is a board fanatic. And that's not board games like my colleague Theo is into, um, but rather, you know, snowboards, skateboards, and his crazy motorized one wheel. Have you seen that? No, but are there Kanban boards and scrum boards perhaps? No, 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 the no. really the physical thing with to wheels. To step on. Yeah, and I actually, he let, he let me try his uh, one wheel at the sprint in Vienna last year, and I put on a helmet just to be sure because I saw his scrapes. Uh, <laughs> um, that is a crazy thing. It is really, really cool. It is awesome. Thanks, John, so much for, for letting me test drive that. And I pretty, probably looked really quirky doing that. Um, but it was so much fun. Join sprints, people. Come, come, come join us at sprints. Um, there's so much going on. Um, for his talk, John really knows his way around everything front end. And with his talk, he wants to help us improve the quality in our Fusion files. So enjoy John's talk using Fusion Components right. I was also introduced, but Perhaps you found here on this slide some interesting details about me and my life. I want to mention that at the end of the talk, I will share your link and you will find there all the slides and some, all the slides are linked. The YouTube videos are linked, documentation are linked. And also on this slide, you will find some more information about me. There were already great talks last year and for about two years ago about best practice and how to solve certain problems and how you should do things, how you must do things. And one of the most important talk about this is the talk from Maya last year, how to build a state of the art NeoSMS project in 2019. And another one really good talk was from Daniel Leonard about large scaling nails. You found there are many interesting details about fusion, how fusion works and how you can optimize it for large projects. But you can use these tricks also in small projects, of course. And also a little bit older talk, but still very good is the talk from Martin Fitzel about AFX. I encourage you go watch this. I'm sure you're going to learn something and get inspiration how you can use AFX even further. And also the last talk from me last year about fusion and front end. You can show, jump over the part about the front end if you don't interest it. And there's some small fusion hints. I hope you're going to enjoy it. A small recap about configuration of node types. Every node type should be defined in a dedicated YAML file and the file name must represent the namespace of the contained node type. And the namespace of your node type should be structured and nested. And it's recommended to start with one of the prefixes document content, collection, mixing, or constraint. 
and many times you want to override other node types from other packages and these files who override other packages must have override in the file name and sub node types that are bound to a specific parent node type should have name matching the parent it's much easier for you it's much easier for your co-workers it's much easier for you in a month so you should really do it if you have editable properties they should be only editable by a single editor so either inline or in the inspector not on both sides Each node type property must be valid after creating a new node. If a field needs input from the user, you can use shown creation dialog property like shown here, or for more advanced stuff, you can use node templates. It's a really awesome package. It's linked on this slide if you visit it later. And here you see an example where the editor gets a text area editor and every row he writes, gets a dedicated content team person node type who split it automatically. And like that, you can create multiple node types or fill different properties, all this kind of stuff. And don't use Neos Neos node type. You hear, hear it many, many times. I said it here again. It's not meant to use directly. You can use the mixing if you want, but we encourage you to write your own node types and use your own mixing. So, I wanna talk about split presentation and integration. And here it's all about, perhaps it sounds strange to you at the beginning, but it's all about to take out the magic. You get a separation of concerns and the components are easier to reuse. So if you have a content element who has a headline and a text and the image, and you have this saved as components, you just can drop it in and it works well. But if they're already content elements, you should turn off the content element wrapping or the user get multiple content element wrapping in one content element. So just an example. How you should organize your files, it depends on you and your teams. Perhaps you do it like that, like shown with atoms, molecules, organism, and templates. Or perhaps you do it like that, just component integration presentation and the other one are all integrations. You can do it also like that. Or perhaps you do it like that. So there are many, many ways to do it. Just decide how to do it and stick to it. So you and your team get really fast results. So how do you organize the files which belong to the presentation component? Because integration fusion, they have no CSS, JS, TypeScript, etc. files. So this is an example. Could look like this. You have a folder, slider, and there's a fragment folder inside with a slide fusion, who's a fragment of the slider itself. And then you have the slider fusion, the slider post CSS file or SCSS file or a pure CSS file, what you want. And here in that case, it's a index TypeScript. You can also have index JS or you can name it slider TS if you prefer. That's just for a simpler import statement that you can say import slider and not have to write import slider slider. So that's just a type of how you prefer it. Next chapter.
Here I want to show you how to use content collection without adding unnecessary levels to your content structure. As you may know, NEOS allows building content elements that contain other elements. So this dynamic type, to make this dynamic the type, NEOS NEOS content collection exists. Let me show it to you. So we have here a content who is a slider. It has a subtype content and the child node slides, who's the type content collections with a constraint that just the slide is allowed. So we have some disadvantages because of this. First, in our code, we have to go a level deeper for searching the children of a collection. Second, in the content tree, in the UI, we got a useless nesting level and we get additional nodes in the database that we also be duplicated for translation, etc., etc. So how we can solve this like this. We have a slider is a super type content, but also the super type content collection and the constraint, of course, just below the below of it, that just the slider, just the slide is allowed. In the old UI, this was kind of tricky to solve to make it editable. But in the new UI, it's really, really easy. For example, in this case, we have a component who is the slider. We have property content and the class if we want to pass a class also to it. And yeah, just a really, really simple renderer. Just pass the slider and the content. And then we have the content slider. We use the component of the slider. And inside of it as the content, we have the Neos Neos content collector renderer. And the lower part, the cache is just for making the cache work properly and have some nicer exception if something is wrong. So that's it. Like that, you can have a content element who is at the same time a content collection. There's a great blog article about that from, from Sebi. Uh, mindtosep.de go to it read about it it's in english and in german so you have no excuse not to read it the apply meta keyword lets you override multiple properties of a fusion prototype with a single expression this is useful if you have complex data structure and they're passed down to the presentational fusion prototypes. Let me show it to you. Perhaps it sounds a bit weird and complicated, but it's a really powerful keyword. With AFX, it's really easy and straightforward. For example, we have here a headline who's a content component. And we have the property headline and we make it editable like this. And we set some color and some background, for example. And with the notation of the brackets and the dot, dot, dot props, we just pa pass all the properties to the component. So if you write that, you already have used internally the applet keyword. Important is to mention that if you set a property after the props, the value gets overridden. In that case, the background is set to red. Even when it's written over there below over to black, it's set to red because we set the color. And here we have the same example in Fusion. It's just aptly spread. 
props to spread one. You can name it like, like you want. I just write it like that, like AFX parser compiles it so that you can compare of it. It's basically the same. And you can read more about this in the NEOS documentation under rendering fusion. It's also linked on this slide later if you visit it. Nested components. That's a question who comes quite often in the Slack journal or at discuss and how you should nest components if you have some properties and you have to make some calculation and based on that calculation you have to change the style or something like that. One solution would be to set it in a context and make the calculation but content can get you into trouble as it gets inherited to every component below. So we want to avoid that and the components are here for that to avoiding this. So the, the solution is really, really easy. You just have the properties and then have your renderer who open a new fusion component, pass all the properties inside to it, make some calculations on that and then pass it to the renderer where you can use also the transformation transformed stuff. Perhaps you have a component we have to use some deeper nesting of fusion components, perhaps uh, have some who well, have about three levels. Can happen if you have some really complex calculation, it's okay. But this is much better than setting the stuff in the context. We also had sometimes some strange cache caching uh, behavior where we have to, where things have set in the context and like that, we keep it simple and straight. Yeah, as I said, nested component, we pass all the auto props to the renderer, we calculate additional props based on our props and pass it to the renderer. Processors allow you to manipulate the values in fusion properties. It allows you to manipulate all the output fusion produces. So a processor applied to a property using the process meta property like that. This is an example. Perhaps you know the fusion augmenter. And this augment don't allow, allow arrays in, if you use classes, it just allows strings. And this small override helps Fusion Augment to allow, allow also arrays. So it's quite simple. I just ask, is the value that I get an array? If yes, join it with a blank and trim it. Otherwise, just pass the value. So in that case, I can use, as you see, the component inside doesn't know about the outer classes and just get the classes over it. And we can also have props, pass properties to the augmenter. So. I'm already at the end of my talk. I want to thank you for your patience. Here are some credit from the photos that I used. They are all open source. They're from Unsplash. So I want to link it to here. And I want to say thank you. Thank you very much. Merci for your You found me on Twitter and on GitHub at Chonito. And you find the slides at slides.chonito.ch. Yes, that's it. Thank you very much. If you have a question, just ask. Merci, Fimo. 
<laughs> John, <laughs> your emoji was was awesome. Thank you very much for your talk, and we should have you. Thank you. Hi. On the live audio, awesome. Hi, Hi. John. How are you doing today? Much better. While the recording, I was a bit exhausted, a bit sick, and really, really, really tired. But now today is much better. You look really good today. So, <laughs> Th thanks for for thank joining you. us uh, for a few questions. Uh, so you mentioned in your uh, presentation that you know there's different ways to structure the front and side in uh, Neos projects, um, and it, you know depends on things. Uh, how will you structure your next project? Well, um, it depends because <laughs> uh, one part we have the, in our company some rules and I can't break every time the rules when I find out this structure is better. So most of the time I try it for me on personal side, I just structure them and try it if it works. And if it works, I present it to my colleagues and then we talk about it. So that's important because I can't always break the system because if someone check out your code and have to fix something they will not find found uh, your stuff um, personally i really like the the structure from integration presentation and override just have the these three folders or also the the other with component and inside the component it's structured in integration presentation is also uh, very well but um so that's the That's the point. That's the structure. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, there was a question uh, in the chat, um, and it is, can we organize no type YAML files in folder structures uh, the same way as Fusion at some point? No, you can't do this um, because it's we have all folders in our configuration, and it's for the context for production or development or testing. I have settings and um, you can there also put some no type configuration could you have put something abstract in in production for example if it shouldn't go live yet for example so it's not possible i personally prefer more the case that i just split the package up not just one theme i also have news and some products for example in in separate packages then it's also easier to to separate the Fusion files even more. Um, in the chat, the idea came up to take out the con no types configuration from the configuration folder and put it in no types folder, perhaps. Um, could be a, a nice approach, I think, to have this structure because in some projects, we also have many, many few YAML files with the no type configuration because if you have just one no type per file that could be a really long list with the time so <laughs> all right thank you very much um when you think about fusion what's your most favorite feature wow that's a good question um first hand I love it because I don't have to write PHP for <laughs> for all the kind of stuff because I'm not a PHP developer. I have in, I can write some, but I'm not a hardcore PHP developer. So you can really do great stuff without uh, doing some heavy PHP plugin stuff. Um, That was one of the first talks I heard from Robert where he said, uh, look at here, no plugins, where he introduced all this kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, I like that you can query the stuff and get your data together. And then also the awesome cache handling that you configure the cache very well, if you know how to do it. <laughs> at the beginning, it's sometimes hard, but it's cool that you don't have to uh, clear the front-end cache and clear the other cache and clear the back-end cache, all the kind of stuff on a production system if you have done it right. So that's really, really nice. And when you thought about the good things right now, um, is there also something which still needs improving? Something? 
yeah sometimes the, the the feedback if you have some error in it it's quite hard to oh, where did this happen now so um sometimes hard because fusion is not aware of where the file the fusion file lives so it's it's not that easy to find out in which fusion file or which line of code the, the fault has happened so i usually test it and test it directly online or on or in the in the browser that i found very very fast where's the error so yeah and one thing also for um also because it's not aware of where the fusion files live i can't do relative imports that would be great for for uh, css components for example or stuff like that so all right john thank you very much for these insights and your wonderful talk uh, you received a lot of applause in the chat so mm -hmm. We'll be looking forward to you improving Fusion further in future releases of NEOS. And uh, thank you very much for your talk. And uh, yeah, we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.